Hey everybody, welcome to Mojave World Headquarters. We are so happy to have one of my closest musical brothers from way back in the house today. Phenomenal guitar player, multi-instrumentalist, Mr. Doug Pettibone. Hey. Welcome, Doug. Good, Good to, to see you. you. Well, good to have you here. Thanks for, thanks for bringing me here. This oh, is a great man. place. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, we love it here. And I get to uh, interview all my friends. It's nice. Yeah, a little nepotism going on, you know. Beautiful. It's good, a good thing. So Doug and I go back to like mid '80s, I think. Uh, I went. I was a fledgling producer, and Sue and I went to a place called Club Lingerie to see some band, and I didn't like them. But <laughs> on the way out, this other band started, and it was like, wow, these guys are really good. Oh, that was us. That okay. was Black Swan. I, I, I thought. The other band was the band we were in. The, the other band like, it was like a nah pass. Uh, okay. But on the way out, Black Swan was playing. You were playing with Black Swan. Right. And Kelly you Coleman. Going, Ke Kelly Coleman, right. Yeah. Uh, you were going to Pepperdine at the time or just um, out of Pepperdine? We had, we had just graduated. And uh, yeah, I met Kelly at Pepperdine. Right. You yeah. studied what? Like classical guitar? Classical guitar and uh, classical voice. Impressive. Yeah. Well, you're awkward. a classic, so yeah, it right. worked out. I'm just old. <laughs> We're not old, we're vintage. Oh, that's right. Uh, so Dis Distressed. Yeah, stuck around, listened to Black Swan, was blown away, especially by the guitar player. And uh, we Thanks, went in the Dusty. studio and cut like three tracks and nothing ever happened with them. But you and I became friends through that. We did. And yeah. that was the, how you met our good friend Jim Christie, because he came in to, I brought him in to play drums. Jim Christie stuff. and Kevin Montgomery was another one. Yep. Yep. That you introduced me to. So yeah. we go back. To way way back. Way back, and you pulled me out. I was in. I was playing clubs too. I was playing top forty at that time, right. and you know, played with with Kelly as well and Black Swan, trying to make it in an original band. But I was I was doing like you know six nights a week at clubs, and you basically pulled me out of that. You saved my life, Dusty. Well, as my mentor and big brother <laughs> Pete Anderson would say, that's a debt that will never be fully repaid. <laughs> so I got uh, you. I got Jim Christie. Oh yeah. Although he's kind of bailed, but. He's, so, all, he's, he's around. He's retired, semi-retired. Semi. But because I got him in the Dwight gig. Oh, good. That, yeah. that was a great gig. And then gig. both of you, Lucinda. Both of us in Lucinda, yeah. Right. Well, you That's know, true. I love connecting the yeah, dots. You man. did it. I love it. Well, that makes changed, me look good. You changed my life, Dusty, and, I, and I, I'm really serious about that. Well, I could not be I'm gonna buy you lunch today. to be your friend. No, no, no. You're in Mojave world. Ah. We'll fight about that later. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so what was your first, like, real road gig first real road gig was with the smooth jazz saxophonist dave cause right and uh he had he had done a uh like americana kind of record smooth jazz right which is not well received on the smooth jazz radio because there's a list of things you can't play and one of them is mandolin you can't have pedal steel oh, wow. so he he received no radio play for that but but we had a, gr a great band and we had a blast Right. Yeah, we toured probably for two years. Well, he sold a lot of records over his career. He sold a lot of records. He's, he's like the king of smooth, smooth jazz, and he's a right. fantastic guy, amazing music, musician. We have lots of smooth jazz Mojave <laughs> users. We love smooth jazz. Oh, is that right? Oh, yeah. 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 They love it, especially on saxophone. Yeah. They like a little brighter sound on saxophone for, smooth, for modern stuff right. like smooth jazz. So they like condensers as opposed to the ribbons. Well, I wonder if Dave uses one of these. I don't know. I'm, we should. We should. I'm, I'm going to give him a call. Yeah. Hip him to it. I'd love to meet him. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good dude. That's how it works. And then uh, I remember you worked with Jewel. I worked with Jewel. That was that was the first really big one. Right. And uh, did a world tour with her, and recorded with her after that uh, for two. I was with her for two years. Right. The funny part about that to me is they asked you if you could play pedal steel. Oh and yeah. You went. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's. I've done that a few times in my career. They, they, I just bought a. I just picked one up. I went to get some strings at a at Norman's Rare Guitars, and uh, and my friend was working there. He said, Doug, you should check out this pedal. So you should buy this thing. It's only like. And he showed me a couple chords, and and uh, I came home with it. And my my wife at the time was like, What's this? And I said, Well, <laughs> another it, guitar. It's another guitar. And then and then uh, we split up after that. Right. That was the final straw. That was right? the final straw, but it was it was a beautiful time in my life because of, I was able to you right. know, start working on the pedal steel. But I'd only had it for a couple of weeks, and I did the audition with Jewel, and uh, the producer came up and said, "Hey, uh, you got the gig, but..."
but uh, there's a couple songs with pedal steel on there, and I said, I just, I just happened to play pedal steel, and right. lu luckily it was really uh, intro, intro, you know, entry level pedal steel, right. more atmospheric, and it worked out. And I got, I learned how to play in front of you know like six thousand people a night. And I remember the first, the first gig we did a, a it was a Vogue TV shoot in Aspen, the first gig, and. Um, lights go on and 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 we're, we started the song and I'm looking down at my strings which are usually 10 strings right and because of all the lights and, and shadows <laughs> I, I'm looking at 20 strings and I'm like oh my god how am I gonna do this so I put I, I put sunglasses on so they, they wouldn't see my eyeballs poking out because <laughs> it, it was scary but uh, yeah and then I've been getting you know about uh, it's 50% more work from the pedal steel, end, right? You know, just right. over the years. But that was, that's how I got into it. That's a lesson for all you young people out there. If <laughs> just, somebody asks if you can play something, just go, yeah, I can play that, and then figure it out. Yeah, it's basically line, and then you know, and right. then, then working on it. Well, I've been part of a, a group for a long time on, on and off outlaw country band called the Al the Sin City All Stars. Oh yeah, and we were playing our, that band our run at week? Molly Malone. So well, you're yeah. an honorary member. You yeah. played off and on. But you used to come bring your steel and sit in with us. And any time you would play something cool, you'd look over at me like, wow, did you hear that? Like, you surprised yourself. Of course. And I, want, and I needed to, to find out if it was cool. Right. Because you are the keeper of cool. Well, know? one thing that happened recently, I was talking to somebody, another, oh, Hippie Dan, our friend Hippie Dan, great guitar player, okay. who's become a steel player of late. Okay, and great. And he was talking about, yeah, well, somebody, I talked to somebody the other day, and, uh, I'm hoping I get that the call for that session to play Steel, but they're probably going to hire somebody great like Greg Lee or Doug Pettibone. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, yeah, i got to tell Doug. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Let's see, after Jewel, Tracy Chapman. After Jewel, and then Tracy, we were rehearsing, and she said, do you play harmonica? And I went, sure, yeah, I do. And then uh, I, I got one, and my friend showed me how to bend a few notes. And right. And uh, she never ever mentioned, you know, good, you sounded great. But that one day when I, after the show, I played the harmonica part, she came out and she goes, well, that's wonderful harmonica playing. Oh, it's that's beautiful. Great. Love it. Yeah. Didn't say anything about the steel or guitar singing. I love the it. The harmonica. Yeah. So it's pretty funny. Yeah. You know, you take props wherever you can get them, right? Exactly. As long as you're getting them. Uh, and then a long run with Lucinda Williams, who I had the pleasure of making two albums with. and. Who I, I worship as an artist. Yeah, Lucinda's amazing, and uh, she really put me on the map because uh, she she would record with her band, and she just wanted you to play the way you played. How many records did you make with her? I did, I think, five or six. Right. World Without Tears, Live at the Fillmore, West, Little Honey, and uh, a couple other ones I can't remember the titles to. Right. And a bunch of other like tribute. Uh, singles, to, right? With yeah, different you people. toured with her for a long time. Toured with her for almost twelve years. Yeah, but she was on the cover of what Time or Newsweek or something. It said America's greatest songwriter, which oh yeah, I won't argue with. Yeah, I she's got no problem with she that. She is. She's she's uh, one of a kind. Yeah, and they don't get any better than her. Yeah, she's great. And let's see, um, I've got my little list over here. Okay. Ray LaMontagne. I was with Ray for a couple years on and off. Yeah, Ray was great. And Draco Rosa, now everybody out there probably doesn't know who Draco Rosa is, but he's a huge star in, in the, South America. In South America and, and Spain. And, right, and Latin America. Latin American, Latin speaking countries. He yeah. started as a member of Menudo, which was like the original boy band yeah. in the world. And he was with Menudo, and he's, he started writing songs, and he would. Pitch them to the you know their producer and they're like no you don't write the songs you just dance and sing right and he said well I'm out of here and then right. he started his, his own thing and and became really successful as a solo artist and and also as a producer and songwriter uh, songwriter he wrote co-wrote uh, La Vida Loca for Ricky Martin right and she bangs and and, uh, and we just did a record two years ago I think at his place in in Puerto Rico and. We won best rock Latin rock record of the right. year with that. Right, he's won a bunch of Grammys. 
He's won a bunch of Grammys, and he's he's the real deal. I mean, he's he's like Michael Jackson, uh, Jim Morrison, uh, wrapped into one, you know, and Prince, right. but rock. What's know. it like touring with him in in Latin America? It must be just like mind blowing. It was amazing. The the first time we went, we uh, we went to to uh, Colombia and landed in Bogota, and between the airport and the hotel, all we saw on the street were guys with like AK forty sevens, police. Right, but everything was cool. There to protect him, or is that was just they were just normal? To protect the the uh, the city. Oh, okay. After dark, but right. we got on the bus, and we had a guy. We had a couple special forces guys, with AKs, right. and then a couple motorcycles behind us, just so we wouldn't get kidnapped. Right. A little funky at first, yeah, but right. but uh, it was it was it, it felt safe, but he was he was really cool, and uh, I remember. The first night we had off, I was like, yeah, this is great. I'm just going to you know, sit in my room and watch TV. And he calls and says, hey, we're going to rehearse. I'm like, what? Why are we going to do that? You know, it's a night off. So I was kind of bummed out about it, but we got in the van, and we were going to the rehearsal studio. We stopped by the liquor store, got a couple six-packs, orders a pizza. We have, we're having fun. It's like you're a kid right. in, in the garage playing music right. for fun. Right. He made he made it he turned it into he a fun thing. He still got that original spark. He him. still got the original spark, and, and and it was contagious. And it was it was. I'm so glad that that uh, we did that because it you know didn't it didn't feel like work you know. Right. Yeah, that must have been a trip. I've yeah. got a couple of his records. I, after I found out about him through you and through Seth Warren, who engineered a lot of his stuff, former Mad Dog guy, yeah, uh, great engineer. Uh, yeah, Seth hooked me up with him. Yeah, I. Uh, Listen to some of his records, and yeah, he's a monster. He's a artist. monster. He's a, he's yeah. he's an amazing. But you producer. know, probably for me, the most impressive artist that you work with, Lucinda aside, of mm -hmm. course, because she's family. But Marianne Faithful. Marianne Talk Faithful. about rock royalty. Marianne Faithful was amazing. We uh, we did a couple. Of, I was in her her uh, UK band and her American band, and uh, we also did duos all over. France and I, I lived over in Paris for a while. I stayed in her her manager's flat. Nice. And it was it was pretty amazing, but she was great, man. I, I remember I was I was auditioning for working on some songs for Don Henley for his his tour, and I was working on her stuff too. And I was over at, at Third Encore, and I had the, the rim set up so I could. I play to the tracks. I was in Paris and we would take trains out of there and, and we had a, a Mercedes station wagon. We'd just drive all over, uh, wow. you know, all over Switzerland and, and France. And it was amazing. And uh, I think at the same time I was auditioning for, before I got the gig with Marianne, I, was, I had the gig with Marianne, but I, I got an audition with, with Don Henley. So I was learning his songs. I had everything set up to play along with the songs and then every once in a while, for some reason, Marianne's songs would come on. It was right. like, wow. Her stuff is so interesting. Oh, I love you know. her as an artist. That album she would, did that was on Island with a broken English on it. Amazing. That's one of the greatest rock records yeah. ever. And she had, you know, we were just like cruising around Europe and she would just tell amazing stories about being at the, you know, the British invasion over there right. when, when Hendrix came. Right. And they, were, they all went to this club, a tiny club, and there was only a handful of people there, but the people that were there were, you know, like the Beatles. Right, yeah. Eric Clapton. Eric Clapton, Pete Townsend, right. Jeff Beck, everybody. Wow. Yeah, yeah, she lived it. She lived it, and she's still great. She's, she's an amazing artist. Yeah, I follow her on Twitter. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and they're always showing these pictures of her from, like, 1964. Right. Yeah, she, she was, was a she was a model knock, and she actress. A she's, she's still beautiful. Oh yeah, she's awesome. Let's see who else. Uh, John Mayer. John Mayer was out with him for two and a half years. Right. Having guitar wars, right? Guitar battles. Having guitar wars, and he was figuring out the jam band thing. He was trying to figure out the the uh, what made the Grateful Dead tick. We would get uh, little assignments every morning, like uh, learn uh, Fred of the Devil. Let's, right. let's try to break this code. Right. And it was cool. It was like band camp. And right. then you come to rehearse, to sound check. We'd have like two to three hour sound checks, which normally would not be a good thing. Right. But it was it was a lot of fun. Right. 
you know, we, he was he was trying to figure out. He already had his his I think he, his sights on on the Grateful Dead audience, which he's doing point. now. Which he's doing exactly. Right. That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know he had a plan to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you know, he was a pop star. Right. You know, and and these, the, you look at these uh, acts that have longevity, and who has longer longevity than than the Grateful the Dead? Dead. And, right. And yet, you know. And uh, Zuccaro, the Bruce Zuccaro. Springsteen of Italy, right? He is. He's he's another amazing artist that's been around since the 70s, I guess, and worked with everybody. He's collaborated with Miles Davis, uh, Santana, John Lee Hooker, uh, Pavarotti. Uh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's a cross-section. Yeah, he's all over the map, but he's, it, it is, his music is, is all over the map, too. It's... Uh, it's got aspects of classical, jazz, uh, Americana, blues, rock, you know, with a, a little Italian twist. Right. And he sings half Italian, half, half English. How's the, uh, the uh, catering on that tour? The catering is, is pretty amazing. I hang out with the, with the crew during the day, and uh, they're like, hey, Doug, you want to go lunch? And so the first, the first course every day is pasta. Right. And you have to eat it because it could be the best pasta you've ever had in your life. And then, of course, at night, the first course is pasta. Right. So I think I came back with an extra 20 pounds in there <laughs> the, last, the last time. Yeah. And the vino. Right. It's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Right. After that, you need like a, a, a Scandinavian tour or something so you can drop some pounds. Exactly. But the yeah. last thing I want when I get home is, is Italian food. Right. Just give me some Thai, man. Yeah, right. Give me some, right. some sushi. But uh, no complaints. It, it, that's, that's been a great tour. That's been for, I think, four years now. Any plans to do that one again? Is he still rocking? He's still rocking. He's, he's about ready to go out and do a, a, a tour in March, but I'm not on that one. It's a smaller band, and it's less guitar-oriented. Right. Or this, this new record has a lot of keyboards on it. so I'm not on this one. So I'll be doing uh, other things. Cool. Unknown right yet, but a lot of recording from home and stuff. Right. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Uh, we'll get to just that. want to get through the rest of your credits. Okay. Here, uh, we don't have to talk about all of them, but just to right. hit them. Keep Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland. Kiefer, yeah. Still, You're working with him now, right? I'm working. Yeah, I'm working. I'm going to be writing with him today. We uh, just did a record, and I co-wrote a bunch of songs on the record and I guess it's doing really well. It's called Blur Street and it just came out and oh, cool. I've been with him for I guess on and off for two years. I've never met him but he's just supposed to be a great guy. He's super cool. He's a real deal. Um, people come to see, like in Europe, people come to see him play his music. Not just to come to, see, to look at him because he's, right. he's in their living room right. you know, and they know all about him. I love that movie he made. Uh, I Trust You to Kill Me. Did you ever see I, that? I haven't seen that one. It was him. It was actually about another artist, an Americana artist, that he was kind of like the record company for. Okay. But they went on tour, and he's like, their place is like Reykjavik, and right. he's out on the street giving people tickets. <laughs> hey, come in, come in. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's called I Trust You to Kill Me. It's a really okay. cool documentary. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. But he's cool, and uh, I think we're going to go out uh, later this year. Oh, cool. To to support that record. Cool. All right. I was doing my due diligence. Yes. Of your background because there's so much I can't remember it all. Sherman Hensley. Sherman Hemsley. Yeah. First off, tell everybody who Sherman Hensley is. He's George Jefferson. George Jefferson. From the Jeffersons. Right. Moving on up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. People came out to see him because he's an actor. And I was I was in his band. He had a, a rhythm and blues review. In the uh, uh, like early '80s, late mid '80s, and uh, we we would play like the Sands and Sid Caesar in Vegas, in Vegas right. and, and Sid Caesar would open. Oh wow! For us, and you know they had all the Frank Sinatra Rat Pack stuff. Oh cool! And we stayed in the bungalows on the property. It's no longer there, but it was old school. Old school Las Vegas. And, what a and, great experience. It was fun. It was cool. And you know, his favorite band was Yes. <laughs> you kidding he's me? He's like, hey, Doug, you know, because he knew I, I liked Steve, Steve Howe. And, right. And he's like, Doug, 
can play me some play me some yes man wow yeah that's funny yeah, well, he's, i'm he's a, a yes trip. freak i'm a closet prog yeah. rocker i don't not everybody knows that but i love i him. just found out about that and i'm pretty impressed dusty yeah yeah chris squire messed me up for a couple of years i i sold With a perfect a perfectly good Mid '60s P bass to buy a Rickenbacker, right? And started playing with a pick. Yeah, he's and, amazing. Yeah, he was amazing. Yeah, yeah, love totally yes. unique voice and in, in bass, just original and yeah. There's a guy that so great. on uh, on YouTube that breaks down all the songs, how they work. After I don't know what his name is, but uh, one of his projects was Roundabout. Right. He had all the tracks, just like solo and stuff up and. The backgrounds on, on those records are amazing. Oh, yeah. All the parts. Yep. Everybody in that band. All I the ingredients were. I saw a kind of a, it was called Yes, but it was mainly Steve Howe. Right. And they were doing Tales from Topographic Oceans, which is not my favorite <laughs> Yes <laughs> period. Yeah. But they, you I know, like that record. It was still fun to go. Right. And the bass player that was there, this was after Chris Quire passed away just played it note for note mm -hmm. i mean it was perfect he had the sound rickenbacker wrote a sounds pick right and just had it note for note like he devoted his life to learning chris squire bass parts it right was, it was i was blown away could he sing uh i think he did i think he did yeah because chris sang a lot of those back chris was like great. his voice was so important in that band yeah uh, I, I got to see him in anaheim and i think 70 Five. Was he rocking a cape? He was rocking a cape. Yeah. Yeah. And those first lasers I've, I've ever seen before. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, Pretty I saw amazing. them at the Astrodome in Houston, like, I don't know, mid 70s. And not a great venue, but we were, it was concert style, so we were able to get right up front. Right. And I remember he was playing through this, just this pile of Fender amps. <laughs> like, right. They weren't even yeah. like stacked up like, Right. Neatly, it was just kind of like a pile. Right. But it sounded Steven Stills has a pile like that. Really? A pile of tweed. I mean, every kind of tweed amp you'd ever want. And two of some of them, he must have like eight in a in a room like this on st on stage. Right. Just, yeah, House of Tweed, I call it. Well, it works. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Sounds good. Uh, I think. Let's see. You've recorded with Mark Knopfler, John Doe, Shelby mm -hmm. Lynn, Nick Cave, Joan Baez. The the list goes on and on. And of course, we've we've burned a reel of tape together once lots, or twice. Lots and lots, and lots of Mad Dog days. Lots of time in, in all the Mad Dogs. Lots of great stuff. Venice, yeah. Burbank. Yep. And now Many this years. is Mad Dog 4.0. 4.0, yeah. This in. is a cool place. Yeah. It's nice, nice to have this room. It's been a, a dream of mine for a while. So if you don't recognize Doug already, if you go to the Mojave website and look at acoustic guitar, Doug is the artist who's playing all of our acoustic guitar samples. Some that we did in like 2005 when we first started. And then we did another round over at the late Dave Bianco's studio, Dave's room, right. mm -hmm. uh, somewhere along the way. And we right. still use those because they sound great and they great. push off the mics. Fantastic. But you're like an early Mojave adopter, OG Mojave user. Yeah. I, I don't even know what all you have anymore. I forgot. I have, I have two mics. I have the, the 200. Which is amazing. I use that a lot on, on uh, vocal tracks, and then I've got the the one hundreds, my secret weapon. Right. I don't think you guys make that. We don't, but we're actually planning on bringing it out again. We're gonna give it a facelift and tweak it a little bit. Not that not anything that would change the sound but right. more cosmetically. That's uh, a great mic. People man. love that mic for drums, so we're gonna put my a swivel friends, on it. Yeah, my friends when they when I go to do sessions, they're like, bring that. Bring that 100 for right. the snare. It's a, you know, they, they, they A beat it for me, you know. With the it's crazy. 57 and that, and it's like, okay. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. The depth. That was our second mic that we brought out, so that would have been like 2006. And we were tiny, tiny, and, you know, right. people just not that, not that into small diaphragm mics right. compared to large diaphragm ones. Sure. But I think that we're established enough now that people would I think it would be a little be more. But the pros, flying off the, the, the people that know, or like you gotta make oh, yeah, 100s they're, they're, again, they're man. They're fantastic. We uh, we have a really good association with a top top engineer named Tommy Vacari. He's kind of mm -hmm. second to the late great Al Schmidt, one of the top engineers in Hollywood for big band and movie scores, and he right. does the Academy Awards every year oh, at cool. Capitol. He records that. 
and he loves MA100. So we've got a stash of them that are <laughs> Tommy's bikes that I can loan yeah. out to people, but I have right. to make sure they're available for the for the Oscars for the, yeah. every I year. I think you loaned it to me for the uh, project I was producing. Yeah, that blues project yeah. you guys did. Yep. Yeah, those are great mics, man. Yeah, they're killer. We'll make them again. We're actually I hope so. just had a meeting about it yesterday, so. Fantastic. Stay tuned later this year or early next year. We're actually right now coming out with our first um, live dynamic mic. Really? The MAD. Yeah, it's taken a long time because David's not a big fan of dynamic mics. But right. It's like, yeah, Dave, people <laughs> live. There's this whole yeah. other world. Yeah, this people, is the live thing. Well, yeah. The live thing. I think you guys do real well with that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we've got a few hero, a few uh, ambassadors out Gospel, there, but Jim. they're like, you know, we want that dynamic and we want that MA100. So right, we're working on those. Does Kevin Madigan use those? Kevin Madigan does use with, those with uh, Santana now, but he was using oh, is he them with for, Santana now? He was using them with uh, Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, I think, right. or without the Young, right? But um, yeah, yeah, he's been a really good champion of great. ours. And then the guys that work with Bruno Mars okay. use them. And uh, the guys from Mix, there's an organization called Mix U, capital M, small x, capital U. Mm -hmm. And they actually do a tour. They're building a facility, but it's mainly the house of worship market. And people go to these, like, you know, symposiums that they have, usually like two days. Right. And I went to one in Riverside last summer, and I was blown away at the level that these guys are mixing at. I mean, they're mixing. They're doing the same stuff that the top record mixers are doing, only live. Wow. Parallel compression and, you know, all this really advanced stuff. Wow. And we've got a lot of lot of love coming from them. So cool. They've been like, "Come on, MA 100. So let's have them. Let's do it. <laughs> so we're gonna make this. Yeah. That's good news. Yeah. So you know what would be fun? Uh, maybe just to add on to the end of this. Right. Is if you would. Um, just shoot a little video in your studio because you're not in LA anymore. You're in North Carolina. I'm in North Carolina. Yeah, I'm and in Asheville. I know you do Asheville. a lot of. Tell us a little bit about like the the developing your remote recording well, rig. I, I started what about 15 years ago when I started getting when I got the mics. Right. And then uh, got some nice preamps and uh, learned how to use Pro Tools during uh, COVID. Right, because nobody could come over. Nobody could engineer for me, so I got good at that. And and I've been, you know, doing a lot of tons of uh, guitar, pedal steel, overdubs. You know, every every week I'm I'm busy. You know, five days a week. And you're home using doing. Mojave's using, daily. Using Mojave's, yeah. Right. Cool. That's that's the only mics I use. That's great. Love hearing with, that. With, with great that. results, you know. So your clients are happy when they get the tracks. Clients are happy, yeah. Well, that's. The I goal. just did some stuff for Mark Howard. Right. And uh, he he seemed to be happy with the stuff. Cool. Well, that's the goal. Yeah, we've got a lot of people. Tony Bronigal's using them, and Wally yeah, and Tony's, yeah. a lot of drummers use a lot of Mojaves because they've been kind of they were kind of the first guys to start doing the. Kenny's using them. Yep. Kenny's had them for a long time. Yeah. He's all over our website. Yeah, he's great. It's yep. great, great drum sounds. So yeah, we're always happy when that happens. Uh, but yeah, maybe you could just shoot a little video for us. And yeah, I'd love tack to. it on to the end of this when you sure. when you're back home and let's do that. Show us your rig, man. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, definitely. People are always curious and they can always like to learn. See yeah, how the pros do it. I got to point out, it cracked me up when I got an email from you recently, and it says certified Pro Tools user <laughs> on it. Your little award. I was like, whoa, look at Doug. <laughs> Certified Pro Tools, that's awesome. Got a badge certified. That's pretty yeah. cool. Seeing old dog Ken learn new tricks. Right, exactly. Yeah. Took it, the, learn, the learning growing. curve was it was pretty tough, you know, for my brain. Right. You know, it, it, it took a while because, you know, you got you have your engineer brain and then your producer brain when you're doing it by yourself and then your player brain. Right. And you just got to get so good. And comfortable at doing all the technical stuff that you don't even think about that. And then right. I was doing pedal steel overdubs, and I have all my my metal picks on, and I couldn't type, you know. <laughs> so I had to learn. So I was like, I play guitar with this hand. Right. Why can't I just type and do everything? So I learned how to do everything with my left hand. Oh, wow. that's that's amazing. And uh, yeah, and that's my story, Dusty. Yeah, it's a good story, and. Uh, 
So glad you could come by and do this. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's always a pleasure, man. You bet. Let's go get some some Mexican. Let's food. do it. That's cool. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Adios. Adios. Bye, Dios.